today I'm gonna show you how to add USB-C to a 2DS XL. I know it doesn't look that great, but it works. For this, you're gonna need a small Phillips head screwdriver, a spudger, preferably a plastic one, or you could, you know, use your hands, but it's a lot harder. One of these like plastic picks and a tri-wing screwdriver. So you will need to sand off the tip of this because it's way too sharp. So it's just gonna barely grab onto the screw and um, it's just gonna strip the screw. You just have four screws in each corner and unscrew them. I suggest using a magnetic surface to store your screw somewhere so that you don't lose them because losing them is not fun. If you strip the screw, you can use a small flathead screwdriver and just putting pressure on the screw. Yeah, I got it out. After you took out the four screws, you're gonna need to remove your stylus, open the flap, remove any card, put them to the side, open up your 2DS, grab a tool like this, kind of jam it in there, and just run it along. Make sure not to bump into these LEDs here because you can break them off. So you can just go around, mostly just held in with some clips. You can also just kind of, there you go, just pull at it with your fingertips. And then just continue running along with it on the side. Really does feel like you're about to break something. Once you've loosened up most of the case, you can see how it's like poking out here. You can close the hinge and go around the back here and twist in a way, but not too far, just deep enough so that you can see it separating. Then something you should be very careful about, you're gonna have to poke the hinge. Oh, there we go. Hopefully I didn't break anything. You're gonna need to pay attention to this headphone jack right here. You're gonna have to pull on this. Either with a fingernail or with the tool we just used and pull it just enough so that it kind of unclips and then you can just kind of pull the case off. A little bit annoying because I glued this thing in. You, you use... Okay, it also stuck to the, to the top cover. It just flew out of my screwdriver. <laughs> there we go. We finally got it off. So before you do anything, you must disconnect the three ribbon cables. Only one is a ribbon cable, the rest are just regular two wire cable. This one right here, you can actually just pop the white tab up. There we go. And then you can just pull out the ribbon cable. Here we have the speaker wires. You're also gonna have to remove these. You can just pull on them a little bit. There we go. And now you have successfully separated your back case from your console. Once you're here, you're gonna pretty much just want to remove everything so that you're only left with the motherboard and that's it. Remove the antenna cable you can do with a spudger. I'm just gonna pop it off like this. Stop here because here there's two ribbon cables that you do not want to damage. The rest is just very simple. Pull, put your fingernail under it and just lift. Pull it out with your finger. You just pull them out. These ones, the gray tabs, you do have to actually lift them. You just lift it with your fingernail and then you can just easily pull it out. Same thing with the bottom screen ribbon cable. With the battery, it does have this little tab here. Okay, next up, we're gonna get to unscrewing the motherboard from here. And now you can grab it and flip it over to the side, pull up, and then you can just Pull the joystick out. If you can wiggle the motherboard easily, 
like in a slow but steady circular motion. Oh yeah, there we go. Now you just have your 2DS motherboard. You can tell which one is the positive and which the negative by just measuring the RF shields. Probe on the shield and there you go. So the white wire is negative. It's marked G on the board. The red wire is the plus five volt. These shields are designed to be grounded so that they block interference. All right, so once you got the motherboard out, you're gonna get some solder wick and desolder the port. If you're seeing that the solder wick doesn't remove the solder, try raising the soldering iron temperature or dipping the wick into a tub of flux so that the flux melts into the wick. You could also try melting some leaded or low melt solder in with the original solder from the board which should lower the melting temperature and make it easier to remove the solder and transfer it to the wick. You could also use a desoldering iron if you want. Once the wick turns a silvery color, you know that the solder has been removed from the board. When you're done, the port should just come out. If there's any remaining solder, you can remove it using a solder pump. When preparing the USB-C board, you can use the wires from a broken USB cable to wire up the USB-C board to the motherboard. I recommend applying solder to the V and G pads on the USB-C board as well as the wires to make it easier to solder them together. Once you're done, the wire should be short and kind of look like the letter T. You can also sand off a little bit from the board so that it fits better inside the console. Make sure there are no cold solder joints once you're done which could break off easily. Before soldering the port in place, you should align the port by soldering one of the wires, turning the board over and reflowing the joint while pressing up against the USB-C port so that it sits flush against the PCB. Once you've made sure that the port is lined up correctly, you can solder the other wire as well. When making the case modifications, you can use a small box cutter or a precision blade similar to the one I'm using. With it, you're gonna make a very wide U cut in the battery holder. Also cut off the sidewalls on the plastic bits that are sticking out. Once you're done, it should look something like this. At this point, you should test fit the battery holder to make sure that the port not only fits, but is also lined up correctly to be glued on with some hot glue to the motherboard. I suggest you don't use anything stronger than hot glue, as hot glue is strong enough to hold the port in place, but not too strong so that it cannot be removed. Once you've glued on the port, you can test it by connecting the battery up. You don't need anything other than the battery and the charging port to test the charging capability. If the charging LED lights up, you know that the mod is working and you can move on to modifying the back cover. Start by cutting the sidewalls completely off to make room for the USB-C port as it will stick out a little bit when you put the back cover back on. If you have a rotary tool, you can use a plastic grinding bit to make the cuts a bit cleaner and also use a metal grinding stone to shave off a little bit of the USB-C port so that it sticks out a little bit less. Okay, so when reassembling and putting back the motherboard, once you're done with it, first off, you're gonna get this ribbon cable, and then it's the first thing that you're gonna insert through this hole right here. Then, this ribbon cable that's poking out through this hole, guide it through there. I'm just gonna pull the rest of the ribbon cables, run the screen ribbon cable through this hole. push it from the back here, I guess he went in, then press it down for this one, kind of line it up and just press it in there, pull it back, make sure it's lined up, and then you let it push it in there, and then you 
push this down insert like that the same thing this one you gotta lift the flap and you just stick it into this connector push the flap down and same thing with this shove it in there now with the joystick it's kind of the same as this one hold it like this and then use the thing one finger to push the ribbon cable in there we go went in now you can close the tab and there you go now it is inserted and me here and just kind of move it around stick them in here in both holes and it should look like it did before we even started put the battery holder now with this antenna cable it's got a little snap here that holds the cable in there gonna route it through this little notch in the motherboard press it in there and you can see it holds in there now it's got this little channel here and a little hook thing down there this little notch here uh, you have to route it underneath and then you just push it down and there you go now at this point you can take your battery and plug it in see if it boots up at this point you can test like your circle pad your d-pad the buttons now you know put the back cover back on the way i like to reconnect the camera push the ribbon cable through the back guide it I'm just gonna wiggle it into place and then press it back down now for these uh speaker wires i mean you're gonna need some tweezers to do this make sure your volume is on minimum both the slider and the cover grab the connector once you got into position you can push them uh, the rest of the way down now you just kind of have to get the USB-C port to get through here. And start from the hinge, just pop it back, then open your DS up and kind of pop it all back into place. There you go. Now you can grab your driving screwdriver again and screw the screws the final screws back in at this point you can plug your um, cards back in see the green light means that it's charging if i unplug it you can see it goes away and you can even see it the orange battery there so yeah i hope you enjoyed the video and uh see you next time whenever next time will be